Hey guys, welcome back to Wonder Walkers. Today's video is going to be a what's in my camera bag video. I don't think we've actually ever done one of these, so no, we, we thought... Haven't, surprisingly, yeah. considering that channel's been around for about three or four years now, it's yeah. probably about time. We thought today would be a good opportunity to finally do this video and talk about some of our recent changes that we've actually had in our uh, camera gear selection and what we are using currently to do our day trips with and that sort of thing as we're not currently able to travel. Dan has probably a better... I would say a better travel setup than me in terms of uh, photography gear because my stuff is what I use in my daily job, which is fashion photography, and it's a little bit heavier handed and not as practical for traveling. So just keep that in mind when you're watching this video, but we're going to get straight into it and we'll start with Dan and see what he's got in his camera bag currently. So this is the most recent addition to our kits. I have the Sony a7 III with a 28 to 70 millimeter lens. This is the type of camera that I've wanted for probably about four or five years. I originally wanted to get the A7R 2 when that first came out. I think that was like 2014 or 2015, yeah, something like ago. that. <laughs> and I was going to get that and I just never got around to doing it. Um, ended up uh, sort of just not saving the money specifically for that and using that in all the trips that we've taken over the years. and. I was previously using a very old Nikon D300S with a 24 to 70 millimeter Nikon lens. And the D300S was a 2008, 2009. That camera lasted me quite a few years. I did buy it secondhand, um, but I'm glad that I've finally upgraded <laughs> from that very old camera. Uh, to the a7 III. Yeah, it's made our lives a lot easier when filming. And the reason you're not seeing it right now is because it's actually on the tripod filming. It's just so much more compact to yeah. travel with. The quality of it is pretty phenomenal, especially with video, because we were filming a bit on my other camera, which I'll talk about in just a second, but it is far too heavy. And to be doing a lot of video and film stuff with, it's just not very practical, but we'll get into that in just a second. So we'll go on to the next part of Dan's kit now. The next thing I'm going to talk about is uh, a drone, and this is something that we haven't fully utilized since we got it, unfortunately. We've uh, taken a few trips, and for some reason, every place that we go seems to have uh, no drone policy, so we haven't been able to use it fully. And the drone we have is the DJI Spark. We were originally going to get a Mavic Pro, I think it was, but the Spark was just so much better in terms of its size. As you can see, it pretty much fits in the palm of my hand, um, great for traveling, uh, portable, and yeah, fits in any bag that you can think of. So that was the major reason why we went for the Spark instead of a, a Mavic. I think at the time too, like I said, we were using my other camera predominantly for video and it was so big and bulky that to have a Mavic Pro as well, even though that is relatively small still, it's still like every little bit of weight, every little bit of size really makes a difference in your carry-on luggage as well, When you, especially domestically here in Australia and internationally where you only have like say 10 kilos to work with. It's not a lot when you look at your laptop and your camera to start with and then you've got to add a drone into the mix. Yeah. So um, we did find that the Spark was the best choice for us at the time. If it was today, we might go a little bit further for the Mavic Pro or, you know, the Mavic Air or something yeah. like that. Um, but unfortunately, that wasn't available at the time. So, but we really enjoyed using the Spark, like, to the extent that we have so yeah, far. But definitely. Yeah, we definitely haven't utilized it, as uh, Dan said. <laughs> and I guess it wouldn't be a what's in my camera bag video without talking about the actual bag I use. And I don't actually have a proper camera bag because I don't have a lot of equipment to have a camera bag. Plus, to be honest, I've never really found a camera bag that I actually really love and really want to use. And I find that most of them are quite big and bulky. So the one that I have is uh, by Overmont and it's just a, a normal backpack that can fit laptop and um, you know uh, books and things like that. I like the way that the zipper comes down the actual bag, not over across. Uh, so that's the bag that I use. I also have like a, a sling bag that's by Herschel. So that's again, not a proper camera bag. It's more like a an over shoulder bag that you could put your phone, wallet and keys and things like that in. But my Sony a7 III and probably the drone as well can fit in there as well. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is uh, one of two tripods that we have. So this is the Joby Gorillapod that Kaylee bought for me either for Christmas or birthday quite a few years ago. <laughs> yeah, and this longer. has come uh, come in handy so on so many occasions. 
We use it for vlogging, so holding the camera up like instead of a gimbal. We use it to take photos like as an actual tripod and it's it's great because it can be wrapped around poles and trees and just in really random spots so this is such a great thing and because it's so small literally like 30 centimeters tall fits in any bag and can be taken anywhere and the other tripod that i have which was the first piece of equipment that i ever bought apart from a camera which is the tripod that the camera is currently on and that's a manfrotto 190x pro b I spent probably, I don't know, $400 or something on this tripod and I made sure that I got a really good carbon fiber one that was fairly lightweight for the time. And the tripod has a ball head um, attachment to the tripod and that's been great. I've taken that to pretty much every country that we've ever been to on every trip that we've ever been to. It's such a great tripod, it's so st stable. I think it's currently got quite a bit of sand in the legs, which is making a bit stiff, <laughs> but uh, that's an easy fix. I just haven't got around to fixing that yet. It's also pretty old now, I guess, so it's probably like 10 years old yeah, or so. something like that, yeah. yeah. It's, it's such a great uh, investment. I would recommend anyone that's starting out in any type of photography, but especially outdoor travel, nature, to have a really good steady tripod. And I can't recommend Manfrotto highly enough. They're such a great brand um, of tripod. That's one thing that I wish that I had done a long time ago because the tripod that I first got, although it was a gift um, and it did do the job for a lot of what I, I've had it for over the years, it is quite heavy and it does feel bulky. So the next well, one of the next investments I'd like to make is in a tripod that is a lot lighter and a lot easier and compact to carry around that would really make a difference. I'd even like to add another tripod to my kit. I'd like to make one that's even smaller and where the legs fold up instead of in. So that will make it easier to carry and also want one that's a little bit lighter because the tripod that I currently have is quite heavy in terms of the, the products that are available on the market now. They're much more lighter and can come much more compact than the one that I have now. So another thing to remember with this video too is this isn't everything that we own camera wise. This is just what we've currently got in our camera bags or currently using on our trips. Um, if we were to list everything that we have, it would be probably a lot of stuff that would be so useless to be taking with us on, on trips and things like that. With that being said, I'm going to start on my stuff now. So this is my current camera bag. This is a Peak Design backpack and it's such a great compact little day bag. Like I, I really like it. Um, I have had this for probably about just over a year and Peak Design were really kind enough to send this to me uh, through my other channel and I've really enjoyed using it. It does have side access and top access into the top pocket but as you can see if I move the zipper down you've got three kind of sections to work with and you can sort of mix and match however which way you want to put these. You can um, change the shape of them and make it more open within the bag which is really handy. Um, I, I really like it so far. I will say though that if I was going on a bigger trip, I'm not sure if this would really be able to carry everything that I need uh, potentially on a trip. I do find I'm a little bit pushed for space sometimes, but overall it's a really, really great overnight bag or short trip kind of bag uh, for my camera equipment. It keeps it very sturdy in there. Okay, so I have the Canon 5D Mark IV. This is the camera that I currently use. As I've said, this camera is quite heavy. It is quite bulky. And for traveling, it is not the most practical. However, it is the camera that I use on a daily basis for my profession. And I use this for all of my fashion photography, but currently I also use it for some of my filmography if I'm doing Wonder Walkers related stuff. I would say though that I'm looking at purchasing another kit, hopefully Sony at this point, but some people are trying to sway me into the Canon mirrorless systems as well. So I don't really know what I'm gonna get yet. I'm still thinking about it, but I must admit that I really love Sony as well so it, it might be an option for me. Uh, I've also got the Canon macro 100mm f2.8 lens on at the moment. This is mainly for my fashion photography. Um, I've started bringing it on my trips though because I feel like it can be really interesting for some macro shots. I don't know I've always had a bit of a thing for macro photography in the back of my mind. I've not always had the chance to do it uh, but I'd, it's something I'd like to experiment with a lot more and I think Dan's pretty much the same it's as well. It's something that I'd like to use as well for things like flowers and yeah nature and those sorts of things so you yeah. need to get get up really close so yeah that's something that I'd like to add to my own Sony kit as well 
Yeah, it's a beautiful sharp lens too, and I've, I've really been happy with it so far since the date I purchased it. It's used for mainly a lot of my beauty work at the moment, but definitely going to be experimenting with it more on our trips. The next piece of camera equipment I'm going to show you guys is my 24 to 70, my very beaten up 24 to 70 uh, f2.8. It is the original 24 to 70 from Canon, so it is quite old now and it's very beaten up. It's still a good lens, though, I, I would say overall. Definitely not as great or sharp <laughs> as the newer 24 to 70, which hopefully one day I'll get around to purchasing. I've just had a lot of <laughs> other things that I've wanted to save for over the years. But, I mean, overall, a pretty good lens. I like to take this traveling because it is so versatile. 24 to 70 will give you quite a good range of types of shots that you can take when you're on trips. And yeah, it's pretty good. It's not too heavy, um, not like a 70 to 200 or anything like that. So it's it's one that's very versatile that I like to keep in my kit for trips. I've also got my Canon charger in the bag. Not that that's really super important. And then we have this little work of art. <laughs> um, it is the Canon G7X and it is the first vlog camera that we ever bought. It is roughly five years old now, so it has seen us through thick and thin. It has been with us pretty much to every overseas trip that we've ever been on, yep. um, maybe with the exception of our first New Zealand trip together. And it's really beaten up now. We still <laughs> use it. Uh, we are planning on getting another vlog camera very soon. Actually, another couple of vlog cameras maybe uh, to work into the mix. But the automated lens cover is jammed. It's been like this for probably <laughs> over a year now, um, definitely since our New Zealand trip. There's scratches on the lens. There's just, I mean, it's been it's been a long time with this camera. And as much as we've tried to look after it over the years, it's been on so many trips that it's just gotten so bashed around. And yes. yeah, so it's been buried under in heavy backpacks in our carry-on luggage. We've dropped it on the ground numerous <laughs> times, uh, walking up mountains, and you know, um, just. Anything you could think of that you could do to a camera, we've done pretty much everything to it, and it's it still works. It's still standing. I don't know how it's still working. It it's such a great camera. The quality of the the video and for the photos is probably not as good as some more modern cameras, but yeah. it gets the job done, and we're we've been super happy with it. This camera has done literally everything for us. It's it was such a great camera, and it's probably close to its last legs yeah uh, so it's done us very very well and I would say three quarters of the content uh, travel related content on our channel has been filmed with that camera we'd highly recommend the newer versions if you were to go out and purchase a vlog camera um, it's been a great camera it's really done us pretty well over the years also got my memory cards just in here along with my Seagate hard drive I usually tend to bring a four terabyte hard drive portable hard drive along with me on a lot of my trips um, and I've also got this Lens Baby lens. So Lens Baby also sent this to me last year and I, it's something that I'm wanting to experiment with a lot more on my trips. I find that I don't tend to use it very much in my fashion portraiture work, especially in studio, uh, but it's something that I really want to experiment with on traveling and, and with Dan and with Suki and taking different types of photos because it's actually a creative little lens. Uh, it's called the Soul 45 and, and it's an f3.5 lens. It has these little levers here that you can actually pull in front of the lens and it will change the look of the bokeh uh, to be a lot more long and just interesting, really creative lens and something that I really want to experiment with more. Um, I've actually done a video on the lens itself if you guys are interested, but it yeah, it's just something different to have in my camera bag. I always like trying out new things and making things a little bit more exciting, mm -hmm. um, especially for our content and yeah, something new to try in future. We also have the Canon 5D Mark II, which is our backup camera currently. It is very old, once again, very battered. It was my previous camera from the past 10 years of my photography career. So it, it really is there as purely a backup. We don't tend to take it on a lot of our trips, but some of our bigger ones we might tend to include it just in case or, or to have a second camera. So the Canon 5D Mark II was really good for before we got the Sony so we would we did take that on a few trips and I would often use it as well as Kaylee using a 5D Mark IV so we'd have the 5D Mark IV doing a lot of content and then the 5D Mark II doing some of the secondary content so it did work really well and um, that was a good camera as well but again it's kind of showing its age now and the 5D Mark IV and now even the Sony is much, much better. Another thing that we've added to our kits uh, this year, actually, at the start of the year, was the Rode Video Micro, which is what's on the camera at the moment. 
And one of the main reasons we got this was so we could film videos with better audio because we were always struggling with audio, especially out in the field when it's windy, like even the littlest bit of wind would come up really noticeably, especially on this camera. It's also great for filming these videos inside where we can point it straight to us and film just, just our, our sounds. We do use it um, sometimes for inside, but uh, we also use the Blue Yeti here for um, our audio at the moment because this is more of a backup. It's not very close to our faces, so we prefer to use this where it can sit a little bit closer up, but it's been a really good microphone overall. We haven't once again got the chance to use it that much this year because of coronavirus and not being able to travel, but something we hope to use a lot more in future. And the last thing I think that we need to talk about today is probably just my phone. Um, Dan's got his phone as well. He actually just bought a cheap Oppo, I think it was. Yep. Yeah, after he lost his Samsung S9. So when we were in New Zealand last year, I was taking photos on the beach in Hokitika um, at sunset. And unfortunately, I went home that night without a phone. I, I don't know what happened to it. So I was taking photos with both my phone and my camera at the time. And... I'm assuming that I've dropped it into the sand or into the water and when I went back the next morning to go and look for it, the tide had come in completely, there was no beach left, so it's probably been washed out to the ocean somewhere. So We just knew straight away, we were yep. like, there's no hope for it. <laughs> and I, was, I wasn't mad about losing my Samsung S9 Plus, I was more worried about the fact that there was photos and videos on there that I didn't get to download onto my computer just yet, so that was a bit of a shame, but... Now I have an Oppo phone, uh, just a cheap one that I bought, uh, just until I finish my plan. So I do hope to get another phone, possibly the S10 or S20. I have the S9 and I think I bought this probably about two years ago now. It's been a wonderful phone. I really cannot, I can't fault it. I mean, look, if I'm being picky and that's probably because from the point of view of a photographer, you tend to look at the quality of things a little bit better. And, and a little bit more closely. And I think, you know, the, the camera on it's great. There's things about it that I'd might change a little bit, but honestly, overall, it's been such a wonderful phone to have and I just love it so much. We tend to use our phones a lot of the time as a quick uh, vlogging method, I guess, when we can't get a hold of our G7X or any other camera, it's always right near us. Our, our phones are kind of like that, that easy method. Um, but yeah, we're, we're trying to steer away from using them too much or relying on them too much for future videos. We really want to experiment more with our camera gear and see what we can come up with there. So that's what we've got in our camera bags at the moment and we hope to do regular updates of these types of videos when we add to our camera gear and our equipment. Uh, let us know if you liked this video down in the comment section below and give it a like as well. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel already, make sure you do click the subscribe button and the notification bell to make sure you see all of our videos in future. Make sure you are subscribed because we are hoping to be more regular creating and uploading at least two to three videos a week at the moment. Uh, we want to bring more videos like this one and also a lot more trips. So we're hoping to do some day trips and some smaller trips and yeah, just a lot of content because we actually have missed doing Wonder Walkers this year during COVID-19 and um, I guess we're back. So yes. we want to keep creating content. So make sure you're subscribed and uh, keep up to date and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.